Hi everyone, it's Andy Mack here, just bringing you a um, bit of a blather and a bench update um, and sort of project update um, and where I'll chat with you about where my attention has been and uh, a couple of books to look at or to mention as well. Um, yeah, so since my last update, um, we've gone into the sort of spring period um, and it's always a busy year, time of year for me. I have a, um, a dinghy hobby which I takes a lot of my time this time of year for sorting everything out getting it ready um, ship shape and uh, sort of painting painting it and varnishing and all this sort of thing getting all the bits and pieces together so I like to do little short sea voyages and camping it overnight so you can imagine all the accoutrements and things I need to uh, ensure um, safety and everything like that and make sure everything's um, okay and I, I go down the sort of Cornish coast um, Dorset as well, Paul. Um, plan to hopefully go down to Plymouth, you know, see Plymouth Sound. Um, that's sort of something hopefully in the in the summer. Um, but yeah, going forward, um, also the garden takes up a lot of my time this time of year. I like to do a bit of gardening, so uh, tomatoes and seeds and um, getting the lawn mowed and everything like that and tidy everything tidied up, um, which um, Take, it all takes up a bit of time and because of which shifts um generally when there's good weather i have to sort of prioritize everything and and uh, obviously sometimes indoor hobbies and things do take second place so uh, uh and it's been the case in this last period that, uh, of that however um i have um, you may remember i've um obviously my main focus over the years has been napoleonics and i've been sort of Sorting out some of my armies for that, um, getting the flags done for my Prussians um, and also um, getting some of the other corps, um, you know, Russians, uh, sort of getting them all up to speed um, with things like Limbers. I have all, more or less, uh, Russians need a few more cavalry, but I've got all the, um, the, the, the troops of the main armies that I want. Um, and I just need things like Limbers, I just need to make, get a few more of those for each of the armies. Um, the Austrians and the Russians anyway um, and then just all the other bits and pieces that sort of add a bit of character um, and I will I do plan on to go on to um, some of the smaller armies as well I've got Bavarians as you may remember um, but also I like to Saxons and um, uh, some of the German states perhaps um, and of course British is uh, <laughs> is always there um, and it's been a period, an unusual period, really, because I've had lots of little projects and ideas and things gnawing at me, um, which has meant I've had a bit of a scatterbrain in terms of focus. So I haven't really focused in on anything um, in the manner that I normally do. Obviously, with the turbulent times of the world at the moment, with the Ukraine and things, um, there's, there is a lot of distraction. So uh, um, perhaps I can be excused for that. But um but I have been watching a lot of the YouTube. I find it's great for relaxing after work and uh, and some of before work. Um, and I've enjoyed some of the, the uh, presentations or all the presentations I've been watching. Um, but it's been a busy period, so it hasn't I haven't had quite so much time as I normally like. Um, so yeah, what I've been doing. Um, you may remember I may remember I was doing a uh, doing a project on the sixteen eighty five. Rebellions of Scotland and uh, uh, Duke of Monmouth and Duke of Argyll in Scotland. Two rebellions that were in that year. Um, generally Protestant rebellions against the Catholic King James II, which was the kind of the start of the Jacobite period um, and Jacobite wars, really. Um, but it's an interesting period because it's. Um, it's uh, obviously very early, so you, you get you can then move into the 1690s and have Kilikanki with the, um, the start of the Jacobite period. So the armies are quite transitional right up to um, uh, really uh, Duke of Marlborough's time. Uh, the, the uniforms slightly changed then; they became the sort of used the tricorn style hats more so in the Duke of Marlborough's period, which um, so from really up to. 1715 uh, these armies would would be okay so it does include a bit of the jacobite period uh, the early jacobite period and also um obviously you've got the duke of monmouth escapades which also involved um highlanders and stuff in the armies for that 
so um so yeah the, the, it's been a um I, I bought a regular as the sort of base army um regular do army pack so i just sort of tested the water with boiling some of them which then they are great um good value for money um nice poses um some of the the pikes were at port uh, sorry at um at ports well at these sort of 45 degree angle which um i generally don't like i mean they do look good when it's like that but um but for this period, um, they didn't have many pikemen. And the pikemen were very much in the wane, and um, and almost ex completely extinguished by the end of the period. Um, and uh, so, it, the forty-five degree angle pikemen weren't really good. So I have bent some of their arms, and uh, and but I've actually bought some more at the um, just at the order. So, uh, which is where if you have the butt of the pike on the ground and the hand, you know, it's just up in one straight line. Um, it's just easier to, to pick up and move around and things and at this scale I think it probably just looks a bit better but as I said I don't need many pikemen um, but yeah I, I bought the regular start off now I had also wanted to mix up and I have been mixing up um, some other makes but I obviously had the scale the scale issue that I know many of you have talked about before but that has reared its ugly head in a way um, with uh, and I'll show you uh, the, the difference in terms of uh, Manister Militarum, is it? Um, the sort of something like that, anyway. But the, these are, um, pardon me if I've pronounced it wrong or, or said it wrong, but it's um, a war games come like that. Now, these are marketed as 15 mil, and obviously, irregular, these are the irregular pick ones are from 15 mil. Now, I might try and bring you. They're, they're significantly smaller um, but I think if you mix them up um, I probably will use the Militarum uh, figures for the some of the um, uh, rebels so Duke of Monmouth or the Duke of Argyle's men um, and in that way they, 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 will, they will be okay but they are quite significantly smaller um, sorry if you can't see that very well but um, it's uh, um, so they're probably 15, but however, um, Donington, um, and, and as I say, it's been a bit frustrating because I, I, I did buy some and, I, and it sort of made me have to then look at other makes and models. And uh, Donington are a lot more comparable. Um, let me get to similarly posing ones. Um, so I haven't, I haven't got very far on some of these uh, guns, but. So Donington are a lot more comparable, and I think they would they would work well. Um, and then we also have Essex, um, which um, Essex are again comparable. I'll we'll show you the Scots and get some Essex under here. Um, preferably Where's the Essex ones. I'll just pause you for a moment. So Essex and um, Irregular. These are on the. On the left is an irregular one, and on the right is an Essex. So um, that's, these are some of the Highlanders. Um, and Essex do have quite a, a number of varieties of uh, Highlanders as well. I think we have the sort of front rank, uh, well equipped, middle rank, or, or mid mid uh, Highlander, which is less so uh, well equipped. And then they have the poorly equipped. Um, so I'd be interested to see the poorly equipped one. So I've done sort of test purchases on the Essex and Donington ranges, uh, and obviously the Manistere Militrum um, work was also more or less a test purchase. Um, and and for this period, you don't the armies for these um, campaigns weren't that big, so um, so I've almost got enough for what I want. Um, right, sure. I've been I've been I've painted up quite a lot actually of the. Irregular ones, but they're not quite finished yet. I just got to do some final highlights on them, and also do their um, their facings um, because the facings are all important, and, and just a few other little details on the hat. Some of them had fi have filled signs and so forth, um, but the irregulars are, are quite nice figures. I quite like them. I think they're they're quite um, for fifteen millimeter. They're quite what I what I would expect. So. Um, and the others, um, Essex, um, the regulars are, are good value. Um, Donington, yeah, they're, they're all good value, really. Um, Essex are the, probably the most expensive ones, but they are nice moulds as well. They're Scots. Um, 
So uh, there's there's not that many poses for Essex, and what you find is the pose they'll do slight variants, but with the same pose. So um, and certainly in in this sort of two or three variants, and the rest are all um, the same pose, which um, I'm not overly happy with the blue there. So I might tone that blue down on their on their facing. So again, it's a bit experimental at the moment, really. I, I, I will um I will be uh, obviously doing it fairly accurate to the cut the regiments that were but um but i'll drill into that when i finished painting them now, now i had a little um i started off by using matte black um, for 15 mil which is quite a common um color to use but the ones that i i did um do the matte black for um it was a devil of a job getting the red to um shine through so in the end i changed to uh, Halfords, which is a uh, auto repair and sort of general car come camping, bit of everything really nowadays. But it's it's, it's an auto um, shop in the here in the UK, and um, they have a a, a primer, um, a, a sort of burgundy primer, and so that's what I use for them. So, which made it very easy to paint. So I went from having to do multiple colours on some, um, and this is some of the ones that I use for the primers. But some of the other ones, um, these ones, for instance, these would have been, I start off with, uh, oh, these ones, I did a grey prime on them, and so they weren't so bad, but I did do a black prime on the, the original ones, and um, they, again, I want to just change the blue on it, and some of the red saw will change as well, I'll get them into slightly different shades of red, because they wouldn't all have been the same colour. Um, so that is my project for, I've also they've got horse, which I haven't, um, embarked on yet these are the sort of dragoons um i said i've only test purchased some so we'll buy a lot more horse but the um a lot of the actions of the period were um small skirmishes with them um, on the horse um so so uh, or certainly horse have a have a feature with it um by dragoons and so forth so so yeah that's irregular um donnington and Essex um, seem to work well um, for this period, um, which is obviously the the late seventeenth century um, for reference. Um, now, so as I, I said, there has been a number of sort of projects gnawing at me, um, and I have a I want to also do which I've been doing terrain for um, for my six mil. Um, and I've kind of been watching um, a number of YouTube channels and uh, increasingly I'm wanting to do the sort of the bigger, bigger scale battles. As you know, for my Napoleonics, I, um, I enjoy the you know, 15 mil, 50 to one representation. So it's, um, and I use quite a big table, which is fine, but it does take an awful long time to set up. Uh, well, it takes an evening to set up, you know, I like to sort of a couple of hours set up of the evening. And then I'd play, like to play the next day, and I've, I've had a I had a few play playthroughs um, uh, um, recently, um, which um, I put on out in social media, but not didn't do a YouTube feature. But I plan to do some more now. And I'm in a good place now to be able to get it up and sort of um, up and uh, gaming quite quickly, um, storing things in the right place, knowing where things are, and doing a bit of prep before the doing the battle so that I can all get it out quickly, set it up quickly and get playing. But for the scale that I use, you need a you need a day really. Um, you need a day, an evening set up night before and then play for the day. So I'll probably do one of those again soon, which I will video and I'll do it as uh, as smartly as I can as a battle report. Um, and I've been watching a number of other effective battle reports and uh, I'll be taking some of the feathers out of their caps to um, to try and make it a, an interesting watch. Um, so just yeah, moving on from that though, um, I've been sort of gnawing at me has been sort of the I've got the sort of six mil um, project which I've been buying and doing a lot of train for. I've um, been doing sort of getting palm trees together and uh, the uh, is it eleven eleven um, six mil uh, buildings now. What the period I want to do, and what I'm very interested in, which I, I've been reading a recent book on, this is about um, Angola, um, a sort of citizen's perspective of when Angola was on. It's um, 
I don't know if you've seen the film uh, Wild Geese. Um, there's been quite a few films, but Wild Geese. Not not not. They're all not all set in Angola, but um, Wild Geese and um, what other ones are there? Dogs of War. And there's obviously books as well. Um, but uh, yeah, this is uh, about uh, Angola and um, a, a journalist, um, and, and not just journalist, but tells the story of sort of people, uh, the Europeans, sort of. And I've only just started reading it, but it, it all um, all held up in a hotel, you know, as the events of the the civil war are unfolding. Um, and I say I'm at the very early stages of the book, but um, this is something which has sort of inspired me for some time. That sort of theme in and i want to do it in more gaming so six mils what i've been doing and we've got uh, a lot of heroic and ross um, for the period um and so yeah i've been buying these and they these are the um airport buildings but they're gonna i'm gonna make them for use as hotels um because of the and and sort of um small commercial buildings but i, I just think it'd be nice to have a sort of feature perhaps an airport but also um hotels which are often where um europe you know people fleeing a country will go to and, and, and equally interestingly that book the, the opening the opening uh, chapters are all about the, the europeans all being held up in a hotel hoping and waiting to try and get a, a flights out of the country um so uh, yeah it's a, another day of life by Rudzard Kapuski, and he's a he's a Polish chap, and obviously this was set during the um, uh, period where it was the USSR was still um, very much involved in things. So, and it's got talks all about the, the different uh, movements of. Uh, so, but I just thought I could paint these up as hotels, and I idea I get some little. I've got miniature palm trees which I've been painting up, and that can be one sort of area of. Uh, of the of the battlefield and um, then you can have a sort of an airport or a military base or you can have um, another thing they have is some um, train train um, kiosks but they look very the train kiosks I thought would be very excellent to be used as um, the little grocery stores that you get in Africa sometimes on the roadside where it sell various things like um, I don't know, watermelon, I don't know, that sort of thing. But um, but they're often sort of quite prefabricated. And uh, and uh, I just thought, and then I'll get some big sort of posters with a fictitious dictator's picture on or something like that, or a you know, revolutionary design on. Um, and then, you know, play out something in the spirit of AK-47, so sort of, uh, but with the sort of um, revolutionary post-colonial uh, Africa um as a setting, so that's what that's something's been sort of gnawing at me, and so I've been getting. I've got, I've got a lot. Most of the troops I've got together now, uh, painting up. But I've, obviously, it's important when you're going small is to get the terrain and the scenery right. So, but I do think um, I'm sure it's Levin Buildings, but um, pardon me if I've got the name of the company wrong. But it begins with L anywhere, and it's a Scottish company, but they're excellent. They've got a huge range of um, of six mil buildings and other you know i think it's mainly buildings they do um and it's excellent you know i think they're excellent quality and excellent service um and they've got quite a nice variety um and obviously do all the main theaters so that's um my six mil project now obviously six mils i've had i've had um i say talking i've been watching youtube so joy of war gaming has been one of the pages i've been watching um all the um, and then Pratagus, is it? Oh, pardon me, again, I, I can't. Um, Willie Bolero's his theme tune at the start, but um, I've enjoyed some of his presentations as well. But the, the common, and then there's the, um, uh, and there's another one as well, which the name escapes me, but the, the, the common theme being is that they go in small scale. And, well, since the 80s, really, well, I played in the 80s, I was a member of a war games group in Bristol. Um, which is a city on the on the west coast of um, the UK, south, sort of southwest or central west, um, and it's called Lincoln Barn. And I always remember that there was a a chap I became you know war games with, and and I think we only played one game, but um, he, I went round his house and he told me to buy some rules, and the rules I I bought were these rules. Um, 
American Civil War. Um, they are army level, uh, two millimeter or six millimeter. And I'm sure we played it in two millimeter. And I think why is probably because he he sourced them from irregular or, or in, I don't think six mil was such a big thing. Her, oh, heroic and Ross maybe. It may have been six or, or two, but, but I remember it very, very small. Um, and, um, and I noticed at the time um, and I, he also told me to buy this rule set, which this one is um, booklet. It's been well thumbed through, I'm afraid, and I know so. Um, which is uh, is all the armies. I may have talked about this this book before, but it's got all the um, units. Uh, sort of, it's just the army deployments for the various campaigns for um, uh, the American Civil War. Um, and it tells you sort of the numbers, what regiments and which brigades. Um, so it's quite basic, but it's great for a war source material for a war gamer. Um, and it also talks a bit, a bit about sort of the um, how the divisions were set up and things like that. The sort of strategic, uh, sorry, strategic, the the uh, formations of, of each of the armies. Um, and then also a bit about the arm brigade and the, the sort of the uh, the famous. Um, Units um, of the period, um, Iron Brigade being one, um, uh, one of them. Um, so, and 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 I notice also they're reprinting. You can get a reprint of this book, um, which goes with this. So the artist, uh, Paddy Griffiths. Um, sorry, the, the artist who did the artwork for this book, I think, has done the artwork for this book. Um, but anyway, the, the the what what I'm trying to say is that the the, the, the armies in this um, have that tells you all about the sort of um, army formations and so forth. But this this war game, this these rules are there's some interesting uh, concepts. And, and why I remember it so well is because my first game I played against him, I was Confederates, and I, I remember charged and broke his line and won the won the battle. Um, we didn't play a great big battle, but it's big enough. But the the, the units are are, are, are brigades. Um, but if you see there, the brigades all have um, a number of uh, so, depending how big the brigade was, um, would obviously depend on how many uh, elements in the brigade. Now, so what I'm trying to say is I'm thinking of doing this in two mil. Um, <laughs> which which is damn small but it would mean i would be able to focus on terrain quite um quite well and the footprint you know the battle field could be um quite a lot smaller maybe on a six by four or a even a, a sort of uh five by three or something um so i i've been sort of wrestling about whether six mil or two mil and i think at the moment the six mil would you know, I see Bacchus and and I, I sort of worked it out if I did do these rules and that and it would get quite expensive because of the um but equally if you, you can imagine each one of these elements in two mil, it would mean that they are very, very small indeed. So I'm a little bit um a bit, a bit unsure um how best to do do it, but um, but what I like about these as well, it, it features a lot about timing, um, and you send orders, and it takes a certain amount of time to receive those orders, um, depending how far away um, the units are. So, and and a lot of the the battle um, is is sort of triggered around timing. So it's not you know, the orders are are there, but it's getting the timing right, and um, and and sort of be able to. Um, uh, you fight your battle very much, you know, working out how long it's roughly going to take and what time you should attack, and then then and and units are uh, restricted to their orders unless certain events happen where they can then use a, a little bit of initiative. Um, but and, and it's quite, I think it's quite, um, uh, it, it is it's very strategic. So there's not, I don't think there's a lot of micro detail, um, but. But I just thought it would be a, an interesting period, and and I remember when I did play these rules, I very much enjoyed them. So, but whether that's rose tinted memories, um, I don't know, because uh, it was back in the eighties. Um, 
so yeah so I, I i've still got them and i this book's a, a reprinted version i think you can get them i got this uh more recently um i had a a library book copy i think for a period when i was young whether i bought it in a second hand shop or not because i do remember it was had a library um tab on but i haven't got it anymore but um but i then i, I saw this as, as a reprinted opportunity and it's a great book it's a great a war gamers companion really to the American Civil War and um, um, so yeah and, and it, it, it sort of got my I've got these maps a map book as well which is um, the American Atlas of the American Civil War and I think they do other periods as well but again this is something back in the 80s so it's 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 been unfortunately sadly it's been bashed about um, various accommodations but I just, you know, when when you if you can get a, a battlefield of, of this sort of size and, and play a battle, um, although visually it is, it's going to be compromised when you compare it to twenty eight, but I, I just think if you do can get the terrain to a point, and, I, and, I, and this is similarly to my fifteen mil um, Napoleonics, um, if you can get the colours right on the terrain and um, um, and, and just spend a bit of time making sure that it's view, you know views well. I think it could be a real fun thing to do it in a small scale. Um, and you have all the challenges of, of of command really, you know, the distance of the battlefield and knowing what's going on over in the far side. And you know, when they send their orders back to you, it's going to take a certain amount of time. And when you send your orders to them, it's going to take a certain amount of time. So any any decisions would have to be wait. You know, time. Um, would be at the mercy of how long things take to travel um, and, and interestingly in the book it tells about all the different other modes of um, communication they used um, balloons um, telegraph sort of well telegraph style wire, wire sort of and, and semi four towers and things like that which um, which is all very interesting um, but yeah so that, that's that's been sort of gnawing at me um, and again, the old whether I go six mil or two mil, um, and I, I know there's some excellent six mil figures, but I do think the two mil, if I can get it, get that right, um, it would be quite fun to do. But it's again, it's getting the uh, again. I probably have to test purchase and then trying to get the the colours right. Make sure if I am doing it on a cloth like I use my fifteen mil, will the cloth fi um, fabric be too? You know, the weave of the fabric would that be too showing to a 15 mil sorry for to a two mil um element you know well actually with the fabric look too ridiculous when you're zooming in on and so forth um and would it would you get that effect of, of mass battlefield um and convince people you know when you when they look at if you do present it on youtube would it convince people that it is a decent war game to watch or a decent war game going on so um, and I know Irregular do a lot of um, terrain, and with the advent and uh, progress of 3D printing, I'm, I'm thinking, well, I, I can probably you know, man, make, make quite a few um, two mil things uh, to represent small towns, and, um, and trees would be probably a breaking up of, uh, of um, woodland scenic uh, clump foliage, foliage or something like that, and putting, them, putting that down. Um, so yeah, it's just just been sort of gnawing at me really, um, and I'm still a little bit unsure to commit. Obviously, a two mil would be a lot cheaper as well, pro probably. Although it might end up getting expensive when you start thinking about getting decent terrain and the time needed to uh, make it look decent. Um, so I, I'm a bit unsure on that one, and uh, whether to go two or six mil, I'm sort of. The common sense thing is to go six mil really because that's what a lot of people are doing the figures look great um bacchus and um but as i say the two mil just sort of seems to me it might be quite fun to do and a bit different so and i've been watching some of the youtube as i say and yeah i'm tempted and tempted but it but the only thing i'm let's say i'm troubled with is the the base sizes i like small base for my 15 mil but i don't like big bases um, I generally like the base is not to be a big feature on the, you know, the troops being the feature on the table. And the bigger the base, the more I think it distracts from the 
the representation on the table. That's just me, and, and it's me at small scale. It's not me at 28 mil. That's completely different. But uh, for the smallest scales, I do like the bases to be quite small um, when I'm doing big battles, you know, that's the, the big battles. So, so the basing would be another challenge um, to think through and how... I wouldn't, it wouldn't, they wouldn't be thick, they'd have to be very thin bases, um, so that they didn't have a, they didn't look like sort of counters, <laughs> they look, you know, they do actually look like um, battalions um, marching, so there's lots of challenges which I have to think through, but but it, I think it is possible, and I've seen some of the, I said, I think the Joy of Wargaming or something, I think one of the guys who does it, um, and there's Project Wargame as well, he does some 2 mil stuff, um and i and say some of their their um, games look quite 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 good um so that's that um also i've been a little bit again this is and going back into the six mil domain i've been reading um i spent some of my I spent youth in india um, i went there and traveled around and um and i did go to quite a few of these sort of uh, historic places um but uh obviously and then there's the famous man who would be king, and uh, and he create the men who would be kings. Um, and then there's more recently, again in the same sort of period, um, and I quite like this because this is for pertinent to where I live, um, where War of the Worlds, um, the book The War of the Worlds, um, is set um, in the area where I live. And um, this is an interesting book. Um, now, I'm saying you're going way off piece here, but um, it, 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 it's just a, a character. It basically writes it as though it's almost like a historical um, Osprey book, you know, telling you about the, arm, the armies and the, the British Army at that time. It's by, by Osprey, Osprey Adventures. It's only about £10, something like that, £10. £10 but... But it, it, it's, I'm only going to go through it quickly because I, I don't really, it's a bit unfair if, I, if I'm showing, but, but it's got some lovely artwork in Tickle of Osprey and it's, um, it talks about the British Army as a sort of, um, as a very much a historical, um, historical, as you would li like in the Osprey. So it tells you about, you know, where the British Army were doing, what, what um, you know, the Battle of Woking, the Battle of this, and it's, you know, and it, it's, it's very, quite narrative, but it, it's it, what my, my interesting point is that you have these sort of great characters of the, of the colonial period, um, and, and that's a sort of crossover to, to obviously fantasy, uh, for H.G. Wells. Um, and I, I just, all these characters like P.G. Carnahan and Daniel Dravet from Man Who Would Be King, and um, then you've got the uh, sort of the Barnaby, was it the, uh, the 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 campaign to the Maddest, which is just obviously in the early part of the nine you know, the Camel Corps, and the, they all have very interesting sort of venturing characters, and um, that's been caught, caught me thinking. I thought maybe I should do some of these um, colonial campaigns in six mil would be quite fun to do, um, and I've always also always fancied doing a um, Doing the charge of light brigade in you know maybe do that in something like six mil just to see how um, set it up and do it as a war game and just see how how, how you how you fare into uh, into the valley of death. Um, it might be a bit morbid, I don't know, but I just it's just a sort of might thought it might make an interesting viewing um, if you if you got again if you got a terrain right and uh, it might be quite 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 an impressive viewing war game. Um, and what other things? Yeah, so so the colonial period sort of come back into my mind quite a lot. So I'm I'm tempted to to get something on that. Um. So yeah, that's basically. I'm sorry, but it's a very waffly uh, presentation, guys. Um. But yeah, that's that's where I am. So I've been a bit sort of scatterbrained with everything, really. Um. I've been doing also, um, modelling and uh, doing sort of ba basing trays, which I haven't. Um. So these are for if you can imagine my fifteen mil uh, little battalions and stuff. These are just little movement trays, but um, not finished. Yeah, I've got a sort of put some uh, uh, filler or what do you call it a uh, spackle is it spackle they call it in the US um, around the sides and you know painted all back green and things um, so yeah it's uh, it's uh, it's been one of those periods of time where you don't really get much done but you have lots of thinking to do so uh, it's been a thinking period really um, so yeah I hope you you've enjoyed my 
ramble <laughs> through my thought processes, which is a bit scattered at the moment. And uh, hopefully so I'll bring you some more painted stuff um, and finished painted stuff on the next uh, presentation. And, and maybe, well, probably the, probably the next one will actually be a war game. Um, I'll do a war game quite soon. So I can pit it up and take it down a lot quicker now. And I'm a lot more organised. So. Um, so yeah, that, I hope everyone's okay. And uh, say, uh, um, I hope uh, your your um, this finds you all in, in 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 as good spirits as this sad state of affairs of the world um, can give us um, at the moment. Um, but um, yeah, wishing you all well and uh, and uh, thanks very much. And oh yeah, I just thought I'd bring you a bit of fireside. Uh, it's been very cold this last couple of days, so I've actually lit the fire and just using up the rest of the. The winter, um, yeah, the, 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 some of the wood that I've had had for the winter. So, anyway, bye bye, everyone.